Can we all stand? For the interest of Bishop and Lady Newman as they escort. Are they escorted by Pastor Ike and Lady Donna? God bless you. Hallelujah. Honor to whom honor is due. And it is a good time to worship and praise the Lord at any time. Amen? He yeah, yeah. brings breath into our lives right. and into our bodies that we can give that back to Him. Amen? Yeah. The anointed praise singers, please come and minister. Hallelujah. Amen. We know. 
know that that is a feat to do the will of the Lord. Amen. But Jesus said, I came to do the will of my Father. I ain't got no other business, but that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So the occasion on today, in which we are celebrating the occasion on this day of our Lord, Sunday, February the 22nd, 2015, three o'clock in the afternoon, the occasion is to celebrate the man of God. None other than Bishop Percy Newman. Come on and give God some praise for being in the occasion. For celebrating this occasion. Hallelujah. Amen. And we salute you and we honor you and we praise God for 27 more years of faithful service. Come on and give God some praise. Richard Powell from Brennan Heaven Christian Ministry. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, if you don't really want to say hallelujah, don't say hallelujah. But if God does something for you, I want you to shout like you wrote it with me. Hallelujah! Since 
you have been faithful, since you have been honorable, since you have stayed in the fight. Praise God. That is something very important to God. Amen. It says, since you have been honorable, and it goes on to say, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men to thee and people for thy life. Amen. God will open, God will make you, God will have you favorable with man. Yes. Amen. Amen. We said earlier today that people will come to you and give you things that, you, that they did not even know you need. Right. But God will direct men your way to encourage you to continue on in spite of what the situation looks like, in spite of the heartache, in spite of the people that left, in spite of the people that talked about you. God said that you are precious yes. in His sight. And then it then it goes on to say in verse number five, which I really love, it said, Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Okay, we're over here. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Meaning that there's gonna be some situation coming in your life that's gonna be fearful. But God is saying, fear not. Stay encouraged. Stay in the fight. People might not understand, might not understand. But that's okay. Stay in the fight. Yeah. People may come, they might talk about you, but stay in the fight. That's right. Amen. I used an example today of uh, Muhammad Ali when he was fighting George Foreman. George Foreman was a bigger opponent. Yeah. He was a stronger opponent. But Muhammad Ali had a plan. Yeah. He knew he was going to win. Amen. The word of God said that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So what, 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 what Muhammad Ali did, he did the same thing called a rope a dope. Sometimes we gotta do a rope a dope. Sometimes the devil and your friends are thinking you down and out, but you just do a rope a dope for them. And then when they get weak and they start talking about you, then we gotta raise up our standards. And then many times God wants to be in a position where everybody is looking at us and they think you're gonna fail. But God said, I got something for you. I don't care if the fat lady's saying, I don't care if you're playing the last, the last trumpet or whatever. God said that I said that you are victorious. So I'm telling you, be encouraged and fear not. God bless you.
And it comes out of Joshua. It comes out of Joshua, and it's the first chapter of Joshua. And, and, and it starts right there at the seventh verse. If you just bear with me just a minute. It says, only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the laws which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right Oh, to the left. That you may prosper wherever you go. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it, not only, but in it, day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. But then you will make your way prosperous. Yeah. Then you will have good success. Yeah. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Yeah. Do not be afraid. On, nor be dismayed. Yeah. And here's the promise, y'all. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I encourage you just like Joshua because God told Joshua not for the enemies that was out there but he told him to be strong and courageous because he was talking he knew what Joshua was going to go through with his own people come on now a lot of times we look for the enemy out there yeah. When the enemy is right beside oh, you. Yeah. So I encourage you. Yeah. After 27 years, I know, but sometimes you need to hit again. Anyway, be strong and courageous. Because something that you want to do ain't going to go the way you want them to. But as long as you stay in the will of God, everything good or and bad will work out good for you because you belong to God. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't give up. Even if you got to go by yourself, go. Because God said if you're willing to step on out there, don't worry about it. I'm going to put somebody with you. Right. Don't ever worry about being alone. Yeah. Don't ever worry about uh, 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 what I'm here for, because you know what you're here for. 27 years to be a faithful servant yeah. to God. Praise and that means is you serve God, not man. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Be encouraged. Be strong. Stay faithful. Love you. Amen. Amen. about the journey. And we're going to start Lady Cheryl Newman. And I'm going to serve you with the mic. You don't have to go anywhere. Amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. Amen. You can be close and you can tell them what you feel. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I guess, honestly, God was truly the head of my life. To uh, 
Pass the Victorian in her absence. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, from, I didn't see you, Mother. You snuck in on me. God bless you. You know I love you. Here now is to uh, my pastors, Pastor Dr. Cheryl Williams, to my very own husband, Bishop Percy Newman, to all the clergy in the house, our good friend, Pastor, uh, Apostle Clemens and his lovely wife, and to all my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. It is truly a blessing to be in your presence today. And this journey, I was supposed to give the about the journey. It has been a journey. Can I tell you it's been a journey? If you look at this picture, this banner behind me, it represents him starting out at the age of 25. Yeah, big buck. The big afro. Praise <laughs> God. And it hasn't been an easy journey for him starting out at that age. And uh, he would tell me stories about um, how he got started in the ministry with his mama making him go to church, his probation officer making him go to church, and, and, and his godmama making sure he stayed in church. And it hasn't been an easy journey for him. He's like, I gotta go to church every day of the week, for real. But look what God has done for him. I tell you, then he tells me stories about him and the Papa Clemens and how they were in uh, 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 Ebenezer and how Pastor Clinton was his musician at the particular time, and he was over there doing his thing and traveling all over the place with uh, different pastors and stuff, and it hasn't been an easy journey for him. Mm -hmm. At one point, he had threw in the towel. He says, I'm not doing this. Right, but the Lord says, I called you. That's right. I called you, so you will do what I called right. you to do. And so now we're getting up to where he comes back to the ministry because how many know that God will give you a warning? Yeah. After warning. After warning. And you know, warning comes before destruction. Amen? And I can remember when my husband had stepped out, into the, out of the ministry, he was working at the horseshoe, and there was a particular guy that would, every time he would see my husband, he always had a word from the Lord to get to my husband. And my husband kept on, I'm not going back to the ministry, I'm not going back to the ministry. But how many of you know, when you're called, Come on. you have no other choice. That's right. So as he's right. trying to get away from this man to give him, get the word that the Lord has given him, the Lord told him, it's time for you to come back. And if you don't come back, I will take your life. And I'm like, oh my God. And I just really have no other choice. Do you want to die? In the state that you're in? No, absolutely not. So he comes back to the ministry. We get married. The uh, 17 years of his life. Praise God for that. And I'm like, Lord, preacher's wife? I ain't got to go all that. <laughs> because I look at other pastors and first ladies in the ministry, and I'm like, wow, that's a job. That's a job. I don't know if I want to do all that. But sticking by my husband's side, I tell you, God will put you with that correct, perfect person to do his work. And I thank God for that. Because a lot of times, I encourage my husband a lot, as well as he encourages me. Right. And it's easy to throw in a towel, and I know most of you pastors, y'all know, it's easy to, easy to quit. But quit is not in God's plan. Not in God's plan at all. So I truly thank God for the journey and how he has just taken my husband through hell and back, if I have to say it like that. And I praise God for Apostle uh, Clemens because Apostle Clinton spoke words into my husband and my life in 98. And I don't know if he remembered, but I remember word for word what he said about the Lord elevating my husband and I in the ministry. Elevating us in the ministry. And just to see how God has elevated my husband and myself, like I said, I just wanted to sit on the pew and be a bench warmer and just praise God and get what I need and keep it moving, amen? But I thank God how he has elevated my husband and my husband has that determination of he's going out to all the world, all the world, to preach to every living creature 
that he can preach to. And he starts with me at home first, amen. <laughs> and I thank God for that because I'm learning. I'm really learning because this is, it's been a journey. And I know what God has planned for this journey, there's going to be a whole lot of more stumbling blocks and a whole lot of trials and tribulations, but trials and tribulations come to make us strong, amen. So I truly thank God for what he is truly doing in Bishop's, in his life. I really do. And honey, I just want to encourage you. You stay strong in the Lord. Amen. You stay saved. You stay holy. You live holy. And you do what God has called you to do. And don't quit for nobody. Amen. Amen. And I love you. Amen. My name is uh, Barbara. I'm his sister. I'm the uh, co-pastor at Duxburg for Life Ministries with Pastor Joanne Welsh in her absence. Amen. But I'd like to say to my brother real quick. What is this? Whoa. Got me feeling so good inside. What is this? Mother Lad and all the bad. 
at full gospel deliverance and you were even 25. So he said that he spent a long time, hallelujah, in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you got to go through the wilderness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To get where God wants you to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you keep on keeping on. Praise God. Praise God. I knew Bishop Percy when I was growing up as a young girl. We were in the same church, came up under the same ministry. Praise God. And I've always known him to be a man of God, a man that really loved God. And not only God, but he loved God's people. That's what I like about him. I remember in October 19th, uh, my church was giving me a pastor's anniversary. I don't know, for some reason, I guess they forgot to put him on the program. So I looked over there and that bishop walked in. And he said, you know, nobody gave me a program, but I want you to know that I'm here, sister. And I praise God for that. Come on, let's give him a hand praise. Praise God, a man of God that will encourage you and, and lift you up to what God is doing through you. Praise God. And I just want you to know, brother, I love you. I love your wife. And I tell you, it's a bit of blessing knowing you as a man of God. That's all I ever known about him. He was a man of God. Praise God, a man that lived for the Lord, praise God, and was there to lift up others. And today, Shekinah Glory comes to give you your flowers to let you know that we love you, Brother Percy. Bishop, we thank God for you. Let's stand up and give Bishop a hand praise. So be the man of God that God told you to be. Shouted myself out of the voice. <laughs> but I just said, didn't I just say, be strong and a good <laughs> So now I can't bang out of that. <laughs> you know what I'm sitting there trying to think of a song to say? And, 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 and I just imagine uh, uh, um, Bishop Percy, Bishop Newman, as he was going through, come to that time in your life. When you sit back and you look it over your life. And then you realize something. I've had some good days. I've had some easy climbs. I've had some weird. When I, I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh those bad days. What I have to do is just say, I, we and us, I want to move. And when the clouds hang low, you know they get low sometimes. They get so low that I can hardly see the road. So we always want to know where we go. And then I ask the question, Lord. Why? So much pain. Then I remember. He knows.
than this old world. I say it was good. Thank you. 
Mark Bell. First let me thank the works for God, who is head of my life. Yes. And to my ladies, thank God for you all. I thank God for being here. Before I introduce my husband, I want to introduce myself. Amen. I am the lady, the only lady.
dismissed everybody else going home they got you on the altar got you saying save me Jesus save me Jesus save me Jesus save me Jesus okay okay see y'all don't know man. see a lot of y'all young for y'all don't know about that stuff but but yeah yeah oh yeah they didn't play with you they didn't play with you but I do want to say amen to the men of God and then we're going to it's just not going to be long but I do want to say, amen, it is an honor that you still got your mother with you. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous abated much. And one thing that I've learned, and I want to say this, mothers, whatever you do, don't stop praying for your baby. Pray until God bring them through. Because I promise you he's not sitting here on his own. And we don't get into the word just a minute. But he's not sitting here on his own without the effectual fervent prayer. Lord, pray for me. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit. Go to the book of Genesis, the 14th chapter. But I do want to say congratulations to the man of God. Something that is going past due. Amen. And, uh, and I just give God so much glory. Amen. Amen. Now they were talking about what I was playing the organ, organ and all of that. And see, I'm the type. I came up in the air where you played for free. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
So yeah, them old folks told you that was a gift from God. And then they tell you, go over and get on that organ and use it. But I tell you what, we were more anointed than these musicians are today. We could play until the Holy Ghost came in the room and took over the service. Of that, they wouldn't let you play unless you were saved. If you weren't saved, they'd be like, no, baby, you can't play. You can't play tonight. Go over there. Come on, come on. Get on off. I want to say that I thank God for these musicians. Because in the Bible, it was the priest that played the music for the house of God. Now, y'all, we putting anything up here that can hear or know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we don't care what kind of life they're living. We don't care if they just left the club. We don't have any reference and honor, and, and it's impossible to give God your best when you don't honor him. And one of the problems is, you all, we don't have enough people that is in love with God. Everybody say they love him. But see, when you are in love with God, there's an honor. You will not just give God anything. I mean, if y'all brought your Bibles to church, would you? See, that was another thing. They would pray you food, and they would tell you, baby, get your Bible. We got folk coming to church now going to discern the word. No, get you a Bible. Come on, y'all. Come on. We don't get into the Word. But, but get you a Bible. But Bishop, you don't understand. I can't read small print. Large print. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because you all, there's a revival breaking out. Amen. Come on, everyone stand to get ready to read the scripture. There's a revival breaking out. And in this revival, God is saving and changing people. And I just want to say to you, whatever you do, don't get left out. Amen. Not of this season. Because if you get left out of this season, the next season is going to be the mark of the beast. And you've got to be sure enough ready and prepared for the time of the mark of the beast. But I want you, if you would, Genesis 14, and let's start at that 17th verse. If you have it, say amen. 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 Right, I'll your pages amen. While you're getting it, I just want to say, Lord, it is an honor. You've been here a long time. Amen. amen. And you still look good. Amen. But the Bible says here in Genesis 14, chapter 17, verse, it says, And the king of so Sodom mm -hmm. went out to meet him after his return right. from the slaughter of Kedol Leomi. Kedol Leomi. Watch what it says here. And of the kings that were with him uh -huh. at the valley of Shaman, which is the king's day. 18, and Melchizedek, uh -huh. king of Salem, brought forth bread uh -huh. and wine. Uh -huh. 
And he was the priest of the most high God. Mm. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the most high That's right. God, possessor of heaven and earth. Yes, sir. 20. And blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. Mm -hmm. And he gave him time of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, mm -hmm. Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Mm -hmm. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, mm -hmm. I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, yes, the most high God, mm -hmm. the possessor of heaven and earth, yes. that I will not take from a thread even to a what? Shoelace. And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Musa, you will look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God said, God said, your struggle, your struggle is about to bring you, about to bring you a name change. A name change. <laughs> is about to bring you a name change. You may see, maybe see I'm just going to do this real quick and I'm going to get out of your way. But you must understand that what had taken place here, amen, with Abram, and that was that he had to go into a battle. And when he went into the battle, he went into this battle, amen, and he had made a promise to God, and that was that God, if you will bless me to overcome my enemy, and if you will cause me to walk in a place of supernatural, where because my enemies are stronger than me, but they are not more powerful than you. And if you will just fix it where I will conquer my enemy and overthrow them, then Lord, I want to let you know that I'm going to give the man of God, the priest, I'm going to give him everything out of it, and I will not withhold none of the time. But here it is, you must understand that God is saying to you today, Amen. That is that many of you have had enemies in your past. And it seemed like some kind of way they keep popping their heads up. Amen. It seemed like by the time you think you got them conquered, here they come again. But God told me to tell you that after you conquer them this last time, you will not see them again, Moses. Once you cross the Red Sea, I want you to turn around and dance because the enemy Pharaoh and his army, they are about to be drowned in the Red Sea. But I can't drown them without a praise. I can't drown them without an exaltation. I, I cannot drown them without you telling me how good I am. I cannot drown your enemy, but I'm getting ready to wash them away because they're getting ready to try to follow you, but I have put a fire ledge between you and them. So when they try to gain ground on you, they can't touch you. And the reason they can't touch you because I'm standing between you and your enemy. And I want to say to each and every one of you, amen, that is in here. Everything that you've gone through in life, you should have went through it. Yes. Uh -huh. 
every pain, every tear you shed, and every abuse you should have went through it. And the reason that you should have went through it because it has made you who you are this day. And if you had not have gone through what you went through, ain't no way you could have been where you are. But some evil look beyond your fault. And I want you to know whether you know it or not. I'm not ready yet. You see, see whether you know it or not. God put enough grace on your life when he brought you into this world so you could be able to endure what you had to go through and still have your right mind. See, there are some people that is speaking because of what I went through. I lost my mind. But God told me to tell you, you didn't lose your mind. He just shifted your mind. In so many words, I wanted you to believe what I said and stand on my promises and my covenant. Uh -huh. Some of you have gone through a whole lot of things, but it is causing your name to be changed. Now, what is the name? What is the name? What is the name? The name is an identity. A name is a, 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 a your purpose. Your, you, you see, your name is everything that you was created to be. Your name. See, 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 that's why, amen, amen, God gave you a name. Now, see, you've got to understand that your name may be different than what your mother or your father named you. Amen. Because God named you before he ever sent you here. And some of us, but some of us, amen, God named you prophet. God named you apostle. God named you. Come on now. Can we talk about the names God gave you? Amen. And God gave you, amen, evangelist. God gave you the name pastor. God gave you the name teacher. Amen. And see, haven't you noticed, even when there are people, amen, that don't want to honor your name, amen, you don't have to come back and fight with them and try to make them respect you for who you are. Just walk in your name. Just remember what your name is. Because whatever your name is, that's the attributes that God is going to allow to come through. So it doesn't matter what they call you as long as God is still calling you what he called you. And one thing I learned about God, God ain't like man. God don't go around name changing and name shifting. When God give, give you a name, he give you a name because of your purpose. He give you a name because he's got plans for your life. So it doesn't matter who like you, who don't like you. Baby, you don't have to like it. It is what it is. And because God's hand is on our life, see, God anoints you for what he called you to do in the field. Could I get seven people to give God praise for the anointing that's on your life? Amen. And that is that everybody is not going to like you. The devil don't like Jesus. Come on here, somebody. Can I talk to you? Amen. The devil don't like Jesus. And I want to let you know there's some people that is around. you got the devil in them, and the devil don't like Jesus. But what you've got to understand is this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So it doesn't matter whether you like me or not. You're still under my foot. Come on, come on, what are you saying? Amen, you got to understand that God, amen, God didn't bring you this far to be defeated. God didn't allow you to go through everything you've gone through, amen, for you still to be a weakling and then the devil rip wrath all over your life. Amen, you got to understand that the reason that God allowed you to go through some things, yeah, he allowed you to cry, amen, but he told you in Psalms 30 and 5, for weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. In so many words, you've got to understand. I may be crying, yeah, it may hurt. But can I tell you something? Dirt always hurt. I know you don't quite understand that one. Uh -huh, but when you are a seed and you are buried in the ground, amen, and your foot come on here, somebody, amen, and people walking all over the dirt, walking all over you, amen, and they glory to God. See, this is the thing that you've got to understand. Amen, you may be walking on me now, but I want to let you know after a while, I'm coming out of the ground. Come on here, I'm coming out of the dirt. Amen, and when I come out of the dirt, then that's when I'm going to get some fresh water. And when the fresh water hit me, it's going to knock all the dirt off of me, and then I'm going to become greater than what I came out of. Okay. See, you got to understand the reason that God even allowed you to go through everything you went through, because he had to make you before he molded you. 
Uh -huh. He had to make you yeah. before he molded you. In so many words, he took the time. Amen. And the Bible said that when he got ready to make man, amen, to make man in, in uh, Genesis 1 and 26, he said this. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And see, what you got to understand, before you was ever created, you were made in the mind of God. God was speaking about you. He had you in mind. Amen. Come on. Some of us know we were wine old. We was whores. We, amen. We did so much like everything under the sun. Amen. And glory to God. But look at us. We don't even look like we did nothing like what we came out of. This is why. Amen. I give God praise. Amen. I don't need the organ. I don't need the drum. Not when I start thinking about how good God been to me and where he brought. I want to let you in. I, I, I just want to leave this with you. See, God had to take you through some stuff. Yeah. But you got to understand when he made you in his mind, he put the grace over you and he put mercy over you. And told grace and mercy, y'all see about them and y'all take care of them until the fullness of time come. And when the fullness of time come, they got to come out of that place. Uh-huh, I got to give uh, amen, the enemy the opportunity here, amen, to touch their lives. So the enemy will come and touch your money, touch your mind, touch your body, touch your marriage, touch your children, trying to test you and touch you. But I want to let you know, grace got you covered. <laughs> Grace got you covered. Grace got you covered. Grace got you covered. Grace got you covered. Y'all, I'm almost done. Grace got you covered. Then the Lord allowed you to come forth. And then some of us say, God gave me the wrong mama. God gave me the wrong daddy. He put me in the wrong family. No, he didn't. Let me tell you what he done. He put an anointing on you. And then put you in the seed of your father. And then had him to find your mom. And release the seed. And she became the woman that would bring you forth. Y'all got to get this. But then what you got to understand, the reason that you were sent to that particular family, because I needed a king and a priest to come forth that would lead them and show them... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, that's the problem. Some of us don't know we are king. Uh -huh. We are kings and we are high priests. And I want to encourage you with something. Because you are a king and you are a high priest, you are one that has been sent by God to help your family member come out and find the way of Jesus Christ. This is the reason you are the black sheep of the family. Y'all ain't gonna like me. But this is the reason you are the black sheep of the family. This is the reason you have been different from everybody else. This is the reason, amen, your ministry is different. Your call is different. You want to go to church when everybody else want to stay at home and watch football. Amen. You want to go and praise God when everybody else want to go to the club. You want to go and praise and give God glory. Amen. When everybody else want to sit around and get drunk, you want to be the one that goes to the house of God. And that's because God want to use you to lead the others to him. So here we have Abram, and I'm done. But here we have Abram. Thank you, Jesus. Here we have Abram have gone out and suffered much. But you must understand no suffering, no glory. You must understand if I don't go through something. I'll never become an equal. I will only rely as a buzzer, eat dead stuff. But when you are born again and you become an equal, you don't want nothing unless it's living. Because dead stuff kills dead. Oh God, I feel you in here, Jesus. 
And that's why I want to encourage you today, amen, and that is go through what you got to go through. Because after the cross, the glory. After you've gone through the glory. Because I'm telling you now, it's the cross that gets you ready for the glory. Because you don't know how to celebrate and appreciate the glory without the cross. But with the cross, the anointing comes. And I'm not talking about something that just makes you feel. I'm not talking about something that just make your legs shake. I'm not talking about something that makes chill bumps go down the back of your neck. I'm not talking about just something negative like that. No, you've got to understand the glory of God and the anointing of God. It comes to empower you to be able to complete the assignment that has been given to you. And that's the reason it doesn't matter who like you and who don't like you. It doesn't matter who leave you or who stay with you. I've learned that if God be for us, then who can be against us? If God is on your side, I'm telling you the battle is already won. And that's why I want to encourage you to get up off your praise. Because when you begin to praise God and give him glory in advance, then that is a sign that I'm on my way to my victory. And God wants you to know that today is your last day that you will have to go through what you've been going through. He said, because when you praise me, he said, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to release myself in your situation. When I do that, I'm going to be the presence of the living God. And when I come, into a place in me I mean I'm going to cause things to be turned around I say to you today that where the spirit of the Lord is he said there is liberty and I come to serve you notice that your praise will get you through the battle I want you to tell somebody how good God is. If God told you, hold your back. It's a praise us together. But God, we're going out to battle. But the Lord said, yeah, yeah. He said, but I understand that. But I say to you tonight, Give me a praise. And when you praise me, then I become part of your battle. When you praise me, I become part of your victory. When you praise me, I will show you because I will. I said I will. I will. Yes. Yeah. 
It's your struggle that is going to have you to have a name change. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be your struggle. So you got to understand God is going to change your identity. You are a born again believer. You're not supposed to act like you used to act when you was in the streets. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Come on, you're not supposed to act like you did. You Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a true creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Come on, somebody. Come on. We can hear the praise. We can hear the praise. With every hand. Oh my God, God, I hear you. God says, Son, tell them that they're holding hands with a name changer. God said that you're holding hands with a name changer. Which means that not only have just a name changed, but they are able to have other names be changed. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to ask you to feel the breath. Feel the breath that is breathing on you now. Feel the breath. In the name of Jesus, feel the breath. God is breathing. The breath of God is resting upon you. In the name of Jesus. The breath of God. Oh my God, something is happening in here. The breath of God is breathing. The breath of God is breathing. The breath of God is breathing upon somebody. That means that God is releasing who we need. As I am, so are you, said the Lord. Let the breath of God breathe. Come on, let the breath of God breathe. Come on, let the breath of God breathe. Come on, let the breath of God breathe. Inhale the breath of God. We speak to body organs now. We command you to line up with the living word of God. God said I'm healing you now. God said I'm healing you now. I'm healing your next issue. Those migraine headaches, said the Lord. God said, I'm healing it. God said, I'm breathing on you. I'm breathing on you. The Lord said, I'm breathing on you. I'm breathing on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now heal every sickness in this room. Jesus, heal every sickness in this room. Heal every sickness in this room. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Swollen joints go down. By the power of Jesus Christ, we decree miracles, signs, and wonders to come forth now in the name of Jesus. God, deliver to the hearts of your people. Deliver to the mind of your people. Open the riches of heaven and for our blessings. So that is not room enough to receive. And God, we give you glory for it. And God, we give you praise for it. And we thank you for the promise. 
We thank you, Mother from In Jesus' name. Now, before you let that hand go, I'm asking you to let your hand be the hand of God. And I'm going to ask you just to pull on them a little bit. Come on. Just pull on them. 